All right. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Medical Missionary Sabbath Hour. It's so good to see all of you here on the platform this morning. And I don't know about you, but I'm very excited to learn more about health in the sanctuary. Um, let us pray before we uh, get started. Dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you so much for allowing us to make it through another week. Lord, thank you for bringing us this morning onto this place so that you have a very special blessing in store for us. So I pray, God, that our hearts will be um, melted and just want to be open to uh, the words that you want to share with us. And I pray a special blessing on the speaker mm -hmm. as well. I'm so glad that she was able to make it this morning. And I pray that you will just uh, fill her up with your Holy Spirit as well. We thank you again for all your many blessings and your goodness in our lives. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. And with that, I'll turn it over to you, Sister Natasha. <laughs> thank you. Sister Jacqueline Anderson is coming to us from Canada, where she is a certified natural nutritionist, as well as a um, homeschooling mom. And we are just grateful to have her today to share with us as we learn about health in the sanctuary. Sister Jacqueline, so you may begin. All right, everyone can hear me nice and clearly? Yes. Okay, awesome. So thank you for inviting me. I am very happy to be here to share this message with you today about health in the sanctuary. Um, I apologize for the delay in starting, but um, I know it's already been done, but I also wanted to welcome you with the scripture of 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. And it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosperous. So I pray that um, we will all be able to learn something new that maybe we haven't learned before today. Um, and as we spend time learning at the feet of Jesus, I pray that there will be a blessing upon each one of us. All right. As Sister Natasha mentioned, I'm... Um, a wife and a mother of 20 years and a mother of four boys. I homeschool um, regularly now since the beginning of COVID and I'm very um, happy and blessed to be able to do that. I have a background in social work and working with abused women and children, but now I currently spend more of my time focusing on nutrition and understanding more uh, the uh, call to medical missionary work. Um, I also do some volunteer work with Durham School of Health and Nutrition, where I also graduated as a certified natural nutritionist. And uh, right now, working as a nutritionist is very important to me as a calling um, to the work for the Lord and to follow his example um, because of Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, which states that he loved me and gave himself for me. So today, our agenda, um, on our agenda, we will be covering what's the connection between health and the sanctuary? How did we get here in terms of our health and the degeneration that we're seeing in mankind today? We'll talk about disease versus true health. We'll look at health through the sanctuary, the eight laws of health, God's plan and his laws. And we'll also touch on a little bit of nutrition and the plan of redemption. And we'll pick a special organ in the body that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that we will try to use as an example to uh, see how the importance of nutrition and the plan of redemption come into play in maintaining a healthy lifestyle. And so health and the sanctuary. Um, First question we might ask is, what's the connection? How do we find God's ideal for health? Well, Psalms chapter 77, verse 13 says, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Who is so great a God as our God? And so we can see here that the way to find God's ideal for us in any area of our life is through his sanctuary. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later as we go along. Health 
<clears throat> is health a salvation issue? Many people might ask that question. And the answer is yes. We'll find a few scriptures in the Bible, but one in particular says Psalms is from Psalm 67, verse 2. And it says, God be merciful unto us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us, that thy way may be known upon the earth, thy saving health among all nations. And so this scripture gives us an idea of the fact that salvation um, is important and it's connected to health. In order for God to save us, his way of saving us um, involves the health message. Oh, is there a foot? Just having the foot problem. Someone's mic is open. All right. So just to keep in mind, we will have uh, you can have questions and answers at the end. Um, so if you do have any questions, feel free to keep them. And at the end, we will go through that. Those questions that you might have. All right, so health in the sanctuary, continuing on um, and whether or not there's a connection, as we've established there is, and um, the book Councils on Health tells us that the light God has given on health reform is for our salvation and the salvation of the world. Men and women should be informed in regard to the human habitation fitted up by our creator and his dwelling place over which he desires to be faithful, us to be faithful stewards. These grand truths must reach the people where they are and by example and precept lead them to see the beauties of the better way. And so we can see health reform very important to our salvation because the bodies that God has given us to dwell in is also a dwelling place for him. <clears throat> so how did we even get here if we were created by God um, to be a dwelling place for him? Well, sin introduced the disease process but faith and obedience will restore health. We're reminded in Romans chapter five, verse 20, it says, but where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. And so by the grace of God, we will learn today how we through faith and obedience can be restored to true health. <clears throat> One of the impacts of, um, of sin was aging. And aging is when degeneration exceeds regeneration. Reversing the aging process requires that we must degen we must minimize degenerative influences and maximize regenerative influences. But was this God's plan for us to be aging as quickly as we do? And so the answer is no. So again, how did we get here? Well, in the beginning, man was created in the likeness of God, not only in character, but in form and feature. Sin defaced, almost obliterated the divine image, but Christ came to restore that which had been lost. And 1 John 3, verse 4 reminds us that whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. So let's look at this example. <clears throat> when Lucifer sinned, he defiled his sanctuaries. But what does that mean? Ezekiel chapter 28 speaks of Lucifer before his fall. How does the Bible describe him? Well, verse 14, 15, and 18, it reads, Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Thou wast perfect in thy ways from the beginning, from the day that thou wast created, till iniquity was found in thee. 
Thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities, by the iniquity of thy traffic. And so we see that the Bible described him as the anointed cherub that covereth. However, he defiled his sanctuaries with the multitude of his iniquities. So as sin has the ability to defile, so does disease. We therefore must see that sin is a virus, like similarly to how sin brought disease into our world. <clears throat> so how did we get here? Number two, our bodies, therefore, are considered a what? According to 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. And the scripture says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? <clears throat> so the answer is that our bodies are a temple, which is the place where God dwells. And if we are a temple for the Holy Ghost, then our bodies are also a what? And what does God desire? Well, Exodus chapter 25, verse 8 states that, and let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And so our bodies are not only a temple, but a sanctuary, which is a syn synonymous word, a place where God can dwell. <clears throat> So let's explore this a little bit further. The definition of anointed means to sanctify. So remember, Lucifer was considered an anointed cherub. When a person or a place is anointed or sanctified, it means that the of God is dwelling in that place or in them. When the presence of God is dwelling in a person or a place, that makes them that or that dwelling place, a sanctuary. So as you go through the process of sanctification, it means the more you will have the presence of God upon or within you. And if you are sanctified, you are a sanctuary, a place where God can dwell. Likewise, in the new Jerusalem, where God dwells, we are told that and there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh an abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Truth brought into the sanctuary of the soul will guide the treatment in the treatment of the body. Nothing that concerns the health of the human agent is to be regarded with indifference. Our eternal welfare depends upon the use we make during this life of our time, our strength, and influence. There's only one lease of life that is granted us here. And the inquiry with everyone should be, how can I invest my life that it may yield the greatest profit? And so again, we see that the truth of God's word brought into the soul or into the sanctuary of the soul will teach us how to guide and teach us and guide us in how we should treat our bodies. So again, we see the connection between health and our bodies, God's sanctuary. God desires that suffering human beings be taught how to avoid sickness by the practice of correct habits of eating drinking and dressing. And so in case we didn't know, dress reform is also a part of health reform. And there's some really powerful um, information backed by, um, by science or evidence-based uh, science that teaches us that how we dress impacts uh, many organs within our body and the functions um, thereof. And so we can go into that another time. We probably won't be able to get to that today, but um, definitely um, dress has much to do um, with our health as well. 
Many are suffering under the oppressive power of sinful practices who might be restored to health by an intelligent observance of the laws of life and health by cooperating with him who died, that they might have eternal life. This is the knowledge that men and women need. They need to be taught how to study the divine laws given by Christ for the good of all mankind. So God's word teaches us that physical healing and spiritual restoration are joined together in his service. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. So to be restored physically, we must be restored mentally and spiritually. If you notice, this scripture shows that there is a connection between the forgiving of our sins and the healing of our diseases. What is disease? Well, book, The Ministry of Healing, page 127, paragraph one, it states that disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. So aging, for example, can be defined as a time-related deterioration of the physiological functions necessary for survival and fertility. Many marvel that the human race have so degenerated physically, mentally, and morally. They do not understand that it is the violation of God's constitution and laws and the violation of the laws of health that has produced this sad degeneracy. The transgression of God's commandments has caused his prospering hand to be removed. And so we can see again, there's a connection between keeping God's laws, which are found in his sanctuary, and a violation of the laws of health. And so the youth should be taught that the laws of nature and the laws of God as truly divine are the precepts of the Decalogue. The laws that govern our physical organism, God has written upon every nerve, muscle, and fiber of the body. Every careless or willful violation of these laws is sin against our creator. How necessary then that a thorough knowledge of these laws should be imparted. So even our children should be taught the laws of nature and the connection between the laws of nature and the laws of God. Because the way they eat, the way they live, the way they dress will set the foundation for their health later on in life. And so it's important that not only we as adults know how to take care of our bodies, but that children learn the importance of healthy eating and healthy living. What happens to us when we age? Remember, aging is a, pro is a part of this, um, the consequences of sin and disease. So when we obey natural law or the health laws, it promotes physical vigor, it strengthens mental powers, and it also strengthens moral powers. However, when we break the natural laws of health, it decreases our physical vigor, it weakens mental powers, and it also weakens our moral powers, our abilities to make wise spiritual decisions are weakened when we don't take care of our health as well. So health and the sanctuary. What is a sanctuary and what was its purpose? So the fall of man necessitated the plan of redemption. So that's the purpose. 
but the sanctuary system on earth and everything associated with it were instituted to educate man on the plan of redemption. God desires to redeem man and to restore mankind to his original state. He restoreth my soul, the Bible says in Psalms 23, verse 3. For I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Jeremiah 30, verse 17. So today we take a deeper look at health reform. And I want to do this from the perspective of the articles of furniture within the sanctuary and what they represent within the sanctuary. When we study the sanctuary and the six articles of furniture therein, we better can understand the Bible and even prophecy. So we must note that the six articles of furniture have a practical purpose and a significance on earth, but they also have a spiritual significance in terms of the plan of salvation. And so let's look at God's plan through the, um, the plan of redemption through the sanctuary. So the articles of furniture in the sanctuary are listed in this order based on the um, compartments. And so the altar of sacrifice is the first article of furniture that we find when we go into the sanctuary. The purpose here on earth was that the, the altar of sacrifice was a place where the animals were sacrificed on a daily basis. However, spiritually, it represented Christ's sacrifice for us, according to John 3, verse 16. The laver, where the priests would wash hands and feet daily before entering the temple, according to Exodus 30, verse 18 to 21, represented a place of purity and cleanliness a place where we could find um, a cleansing, where we give our life to Christ through baptism. The golden candlesticks on earth provided light in the holy place. And its spiritual represent representation was that we also are to be a light to the world through witnessing as Christ was a light to the world in the life that he lived. The table of showbread was a place where fresh bread was prepared by the priests on Sabbath and laid there every Sabbath. Its spiritual representation represented the word of God, who Christ was for us. And it represents that we too must also feed on the word of God daily in order to grow spiritually. The altar of incense was a place where holy fire was lit physically and on, on this earth. But its representation was a place of prayer where the prayer of the saints would go up to God and where we would be interceded for on behalf, um, where we would be uh, interceded for by the priests. And the Ark of the Covenant was a place where God met with the high priests. This was in the most holy place. And the spiritual representation was that this was a place where God's presence dwelt. This is where we could find his Shekinah glory. Now, isn't that interesting that we are called God's sanctuary? Our bodies are a temple for the presence of God to dwell. And so how much more important is it for us to ensure that our bodies are an appropriate place, both physically, mentally, and spiritually for the spirit of God to dwell. Man's original diet and how it impacts our salvation. So earlier, we looked at the connection between the mind, the spirit, and our bodies. And we see that the violation of the laws of health are just as serious as violating the laws of God the Ten Commandments. So we can conclude that we put in our body, what we put in our bodies impacts our health and ultimately our salvation. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19, what, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, 
which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? 1 Corinthians 3 verse 17 also says, If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. So where does true sanctification and true health really exist? Well, true health begins on the inside. It starts in the mind and is seen in how we take care of our body temple. The results of appetite and our obedience to the laws of health will eventually be displayed on the outside, most visibly in our skin. Sorry, does someone have a question or a comment? No, that was an accident. Go on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. So true health and true beauty. We are called to be a godly people who think, feel, and act in harmony with the principles of heaven. For the spirit to recreate or regenerate in us the character of our Lord, we should we should involve ourselves only in those things which will produce Christ-like purity, health, and joy in our lives. This means that our diet, our amusement, our and our entertainment should meet the highest standards of Christian taste and beauty. While recognizing cultural differences, our diet and dress is to be simple, modest, and neat benefiting those who choose, whose true beauty does not consist of outward adornment, but perishable ornament of a gentle and quiet spirit. It also means that because our bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit, we are to care for them intelligently. Along with adequate exercise and rest, we are to adopt the most healthful diet possible and abstain from unclean foods identified in the scriptures. First Peter chapter three, verse three and four says, whose adorning, let it not be of the outward adorning of plaiting of the hair or of wearing of gold or putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. So the eight laws of health, for those who may not know, what are the eight laws of health? Well, you can see it through the acronym New Start. It's nutrition, exercise, water, sunlight, temperance, air, and rest, and trust in God. So the articles of furniture and what they teach us about health can be broken down as such. The altar of sacrifice, as we spoke about, teaches us that we must deny self. So there's gonna be times when we do have to leave that snack alone, or um, stay away from something that's not as healthy and make a healthier choice. It also involves detoxing the body, that there are times when we must abstain from even that which is good and give the body a break so that it can reset and focus on healing. Detoxing um, or fasting is something that we'll talk about a little bit after, but it's something that our body naturally does every night. As long as we don't eat late, we are going through a bit of a fast where our body has time to heal throughout the night. The labor, according to Exodus 30, verse 19 um, to 20, I believe, sorry, and John chapter 3, verse 3, 5, and 6, talks about the importance of water cleansing the soul temple and maintaining a pure mind. So we can see it represented in that fashion. The labor was a place where the priests would go to cleanse and wash their hands and feet before they entered the most holy, the holy or even the most holy place. The table of showbread was there to teach us that we must feed on the word of God daily. This can be likened unto practicing of eating a healthy diet or nutrition, as was just mentioned. The altar of incense is a place of prayer and fasting. 
for health of the body and the spirit. It also can represent temperance. So maintaining a healthy balance of um, work and sleep and dietary habits. Um, this is a place where we create um, or where balance is created in our lives. Okay. And practicing that balance, beginning with prayer and fasting is a wonderful place for us to start. When we approach the candlesticks, we're reminded of our duty to witness and to share with others, to shine our light. People will see health in us from the outside and they will tell you. So we are to practice what we preach and how we live through exercise, through getting sunlight, fresh air, and those must be done daily. Witnessing and sharing these principles with others is also essential and is a part of our Christian duty, not just telling people about the gospel, but about how we can, in a healthy way, maintain a lifestyle that is pleasing to God, so that when we go to share the gospel, we're not sickly, um, but we have a testimony of God's goodness through how we've lived our lives. And lastly, the Ark of the Covenant. And the scriptures are there to support that we must demonstrate love for God through obedience to his commandments, including the eight laws of health and limiting stress by trusting God, experiencing true rest, um, God's sabbatismos. Sabbatismos is another word for heaven, and it means rest. Because heaven is a place where the atmosphere was always in a state of rest until Lucifer fell and disrupted that. And that is why the Bible is so specific about sharing that there was war in heaven and Michael fought against the dragon and, um, and, he, and he prevailed against him. And the dragon was cast out because Lucifer refused and rejected God's mercy. He refused to keep God's commandments and be obedient. And we'll see that obedience to God's law, complete obedience, it actually extends our lives. If you notice that um, in the places of the world where people are the most healthy and live the longest, many of them are Sabbath keepers. And that's something that science also supports as well. God's plan. In order to know what are the best foods, we must study God's original plan. For man's diet, he who created man and who understands his needs, appointed Adam his food. Grain, nuts, fruits, and vegetables constitute the diet chosen for us by our creator. Among those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, um, Child Guidance says, meat eating will eventually be done away with. Flesh will cease to form a part of their diet. We should ever keep this end in view and endeavor to work steadily toward it. So it's not always an easy choice, but it is the ideal choice. It is the direction that God wants us to go towards, and he wants us to work steadily towards it. Make an effort, even if it's, you know, cutting back on how much meat we eat per week to eventually eating it once a week to eventually completely eliminating it from our diet. If that is something someone is struggling with, those are definitely strategies we can use to accomplish that goal. And I want to talk to you about the eight laws of health um, from the perspective of the beauty of the skin. This is just one of the large, actually, it is the largest organ in the body. And um, when we look at the importance of how the skin in and of itself um, covers us and protects us, it creates balance for our bodies. Um, it is the first thing that people see when they look at us. And so you can ask yourself, does my skin um, reveal uh, to the world that I live a healthy lifestyle? And it's your natural beauty, not one that has to be covered with makeup 
because that's not healthy for our skin either. It blocks the pores and creates other health issues. And so let's look at um, health from this perspective, the eight laws of health. Fruits, grains, and vegetables prepared in a simple way, free from spice and grease of all kinds uh, um, or make with milk or cream, the most healthful diet. They are, in, sorry, they impart nourishment to the body and give a power of endurance and vigor and into, of intellect that are not produced by a stimulating diet. So what it's saying here is that the diet of fruits and grains and vegetables prepared in a simple way is better than a diet that is filled with spice and grease, um, dairy, um, and, and meats, um, which are not the healthier choice, but the fruits, grains, and vegetables produce more of a healthful outcome for us. The other diet, of course, is very stimulating to the body. So the first law of health um, is nutrition. And from, again, we're going to look at it from the perspective of the beauty of the skin. So in order to achieve a youthful glow and revitalize the mind, body, and spirit, a plant-based diet is best. All nourishment for mankind found in the world today is initially made by plants. When one eats animal products, the nourishment received is secondhand. A high meat diet stimulates a rapid rate of growth, predisposing us as human beings to a shorter lifespan. So a deviation of the original plan um, in terms of nutrition was an animal-based diet. Now, Leviticus 17, verse 11 speaks to this, and it says that for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Ever wonder why you seem to have more energy when eating a flesh-based diet? Animal protein, or this is because animal protein tends to run our en engines at a high rate of speed, even when we're at rest. So even when we're sleeping, our bodies are continually going rapidly promoting accelerated aging. Introduced after the flood to shorten the lifespan of man. So meat was never the original diet. It was never intended for us. However, it was introduced simply because all plant life had died. And the um, quickest resource that God could use for mankind to sustain them um, in terms of food was a, a meat-based diet, an animal-based diet but he did give them instructions on what to eat and how to prepare that flesh or that meat um, at that time. And um, we'll learn a little bit more about it, but just keeping in mind that it was to be um, free from the fat of the animal and free from the blood. And so if, if you know someone or you yourself might be eating an animal-based diet, and you're eating meats when you go out, you order maybe some chicken or something like that when you go out, what are the likelihoods that that meat has been cleaned of all its fat and drained of all its blood? If not, then you're not in line with even the principles that are set out in the Bible for eating an animal-based diet. And so we want to be in complete harmony with what God's word teaches us and obedience to his word. Remember that an animal lifespan versus God's intended lifespan for man um, is actually shorter. Did you know that animals live a shorter lifespan than human beings? And so when we consume their flesh, what do we think will happen to us? Child guidance says that when the use of flesh food is discontinued, there's often a sense of weakness, a lack of vigor. Many urge this as evidence that flesh food is essential, but it is because foods of this class are stimulating because they fever the blood and excite the nerves that they are so missed. Some will find it as difficult to leave off of flesh eating as it is for the drunkard to give up the dram but they will be better for the, for the change. So if we are able to give it up, 
we will be better off. True nutrition, a plant-based diet and the skin. So the benefits of a plant-based diet show that aging of the skin and the hair is less noticeable in vegetarians. Skin is freer from blemishes and has a smoother appearance and a healthier glow. The weight is lighter. The muscles and the joints are more supple and the aging process is slower in vegetarians according to science and plant-based eaters. The second law of health is exercise. And exercise works to detoxify the skin by promoting sweating, which purifies the pores. It tightens the skin, reduces wrinkles and sagging of the skin, reduces fat and promotes better muscle tone in all areas of the body and including the face and encourages good circulation. So good circulation is equivalent to good health. Health law number three is about water. Water is absolutely necessary to maintaining a good skin. Why? Because your body is about 60 to 70% water. It helps to detox and eliminate by eliminating toxins through urine, also through sweat, um, it cleanses through daily baths or showers. This is very important because when we don't um, shower daily or take a bath daily or even every other day as often as possible, I mean, you don't have to do two, three times a day, but at least once a day, um, it's very important because the body sheds not only skin, dead skin, skin cells, but um, through toxins, through our sweat. And when we don't take those showers or don't change our bed sheets um, or don't change our clothes often and wash them frequent, as often as we can, um, our body reabsorbs those toxins. And so we need to just keep that in mind, the um, importance of um, bathing and washing and um, keeping our bed linen and our clothing clean. Uh, water oxygenates the cells. And it also prevents dehydration, brain fog, and fatigue. Health law number four, sunlight. So sunlight is extremely important to having a radiant, beautiful skin and a pleasant, happy temperament. It improves vitamin D. Um, it encourages youthful glow. It improves mood and revitalizes the body by providing energy. Even getting sun in the winter is needed in colder climates. And we really only need to expose our hands and our face um, to get the equivalent amount of sun that our body needs. The lighter the skin, the less time in the sun you need. The darker the skin, a little more time. And usually it's about 15 minutes for those who are Caucasian. And those who have much darker skin, you need maybe about 30 to 45 minutes of sunlight exposure per day. Health law number five, temperance. So as we mentioned before, temperance impacts our beauty inside and out, in our moods and also in our appearance. It shows how we are taking care of ourselves. So that includes a work-life balance. So not overworking, killing ourselves with three, four shifts um, in a row and not getting any sleep. It's um, important to get enough sleep, um, at least eight hours a day, um, and we must be in bed at least by nine, ten the latest um, every night, because our body goes through a reset the first three hours of the night um, for our uh physically. So for physical healing and rejuvenation, we need to be in bed by 9, 10, the latest. And after midnight, our body starts to go through um, mental, uh, mental rejuvenation thereafter. So those first few hours after midnight um, is when our mind goes through the detox. So if we miss those uh, first few hours at night, we're going to our bed at midnight, one o'clock, we're losing out on getting that physical healing. And especially if we're suffering from certain ailments, our body's gonna miss out on that. 
We have to remember um, not to overwork and to prevent burnout. Just know your limits. Know when your body is giving you a message. Your body will tell you. So just listen to your body. And the question is, can you think of any other areas in our life or ways that we are being intemperate? Health law number six, fresh air. Fresh air revitalizes the skin by providing oxygen to the brain and the cells of the body. Cool air tightens and closes the pores while warm air opens the pores. Breathing fresh air promotes the healthy exchanges of gases in the body, removing the carbon dioxide and toxins trapped in the lungs. So getting that fresh air is very important, especially when we practice breathing in and out through the nose um, and not so much through the mouth, simply because we will um, create an imbalance because our nose will only pull in so much and exhale so much. And that's a perfect balance. Whereas when we breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth, there's too much air being lost. And then there's a little slight imbalance. And so we wanna make sure that there's a perfect balance when we're breathing. Health law number seven is rest. So what happens when we don't get rest and why? Um, should we get proper sleep? Well, the effects that we're seeing on the outside is we'll look tired, we'll feel old, and there will be more aches and pains in return. Sleep is very important, and I think it's underestimated. But rest is necessary for healing, as was mentioned before. It re-energizes the body and recharges the brain. It also promotes clarity of mind. Our last health law is trust in God. So trust in God is essential to aging gracefully. Without spending time in prayer and meditation at least twice per day, we starve the spirit of its necessary food to sustain optimal spiritual health. And as you may know, we should eat a minimum of two meals a day, maximum three. If you're doing a physical type of job daily, then three meals is okay. Um, but two meals is really all we need because we want to ensure that we have enough time in between to get our water in. And sometimes we don't space our meals out enough. There's a minimum of four to five hours between meals that is required at the two hour mark after a meal and before the next is when we should really start drinking all that water and getting it in up to about half hour before our next meal. And if we're eating too often, if we're frequently snacking, we won't have enough time for water because we should not be eating and drinking at the same time. So trusting in God will help uh, similarly um, having that two, two times a day of prayer time, of devotional time with God, if we're not getting that in minimum, um, we will starve the spirit as though you're starving your own body of physical food. Um, Daniel prayed three times a day. If we're able to stop in the middle of the day for prayer, that's even better for us until we get to the place where we are walking and talking with God consistently. Um, so we learn that this type of lifestyle um, is necessary food to sustain optimal spiritual health, and it's a buffer to stress and helps to counteract its aging effects on the skin. It removes worry and doubt and fear. And Ministry of Healing, page 128, in summary, says that nearly for nearly 6,000 years, this world has been on exhibit before the universe. The prevalence of degeneracy and disease in the human race today demonstrate the sure result of disobedience to God's law. A decline in the physical, mental, and spiritual powers. Whatever injures the health not only lessens physical vigor, but tends to weaken the mental and moral powers. So we can see that there is a connection between our health physically and our mind and spirit as it relates to both character development and our connection to Christ. A pure, healthy life 
is most favorable for the perfection of Christian character and for the development of the powers of the mind and body. Many who are now half converted on the question of meat eating will go from God's people to walk no more with them. Far better give up the name of a Christian than make a profession and at the same time indulge appetites which strengthen unholy passions. God calls for a decided reformation. And so I pray that this information uh, was a blessing to you. Um, if we're able to maybe do a part two, we can talk more about the health laws in detail and diet through the sanctuary, just more specifically what that looks like. But in conclusion, the scripture reminds us that I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Psalms 40 verse 8. The capacity for spiritual growth increases as God's laws of health are practiced in our daily life. But the so 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 18, then encourages us to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And that is the end of my presentation. Wonderful. We... Wonderful. Thank you, Sister Jacqueline. That was very informative. Um, a lot of good research that was presented. And I like you know, how you made the connection between the sanctuary and our health. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to open it up for any questions for Sister Jacqueline, any thoughts or comments? Great job, Jackie. <laughs> Thank you, Jasmine. <laughs> uh, iPhone Natasha? Hi, Natasha. Uh, go ahead and ask your question. If your hand is raised. Oops. Hi, can okay. you hear me now? Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, hi. So it's Natasha from Canada. I just want to say thank you for this presentation. Um, and I am looking forward to part two. I do have a question about the skin. You said like the sagging of the skin. Um, exercise, can you just maybe repeat that what you said about exercise and oxygen let me see where the hand is sure sure i can share that with you are you able to see my screen yes i can see the screen okay I'll go right back to it for you Okay, so with exercise, um, it just helps to promote sweating um, and detoxing. And so it helps to open up the pores so that the toxins can get out. Um, when we exercise, um, our bodies, um, it allows our bodies to tighten the skin, which in essence, then reduces the wrinkles and any sagging that might be occurring in different areas of our body. Um, it reduces the fat, promotes better muscle tone and areas of the body, including the face, and encourages great circulation. So when we exercise, um, blood moves from our internal organs to our external organs, um, like the skin, and to the muscles, um, those organs that are required um, for, for movement and for flexibility. And so when you see that flushed look on someone who's been working out, it's yeah. actually very good because the blood is now doing its exchange. It's moving the, um, it's removing the dead cells and any toxins from the um, underneath the skin and sending good nourishment to the skin as well as oxygen through the blood to, um, to the surface of our skin. So the blood starts pumping a lot faster, the pores are opening, the, you know, all that exchange is happening. Exercise is amazing. Um, not just for for looking good and getting into great shape, but um, promoting healthy skin, reducing wrinkles, sagging, and things like that. 
Okay, and I just have a quick question about the exercise, as opposed mm -hmm. to there's, you know, we're God's people, um, yeah. and, you know, the world, we, there's so many, there's, like, I mean, everyone's joined at a gym, not everyone, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, so I don't necessarily have to join a gym, right? A brisk walk, like if you follow what it says in Spirit of Prophecy for exercise, that should be good enough. Oh yeah. Um, I, I encourage and promote, um, whatever you're able to do, um, refraining from exercises, um, that involve spiritualism. Right. Um, and you can do your own research and dig into that a little bit more things like yoga, um, Pilates, those things have a spiritual connection to them that we're encouraged to kind of stay away from or to stay away from. Um, but you also don't want to do too much vigorous exercise. It's not always the best for the joints. Right. However, getting cardio in there. So if you go for a walk, it should be yeah a brisk walk. Um, if you're able to, you got good knees. You can do in the winter. You can do up and down your stairs. Right. Um, stretching in your own home if you've got an exercise mat is really good. Um, you know, um, the ex the gym environment is not the best. Exercising in open air is the best for you. Right. Um, I with, agree with your own body weight as resistance, as opposed to um, artificial weights, um, wherever possible, whenever possible. Um, right. You find men, for example, who do construction and tougher yeah. jobs where it requires them to lift heavier, de great deals of weight, um, move equipment or um, lift heavy things um, may require, um, exercises that involve lifting weights um, right that also should be moderate and and maintained um maintain a, a healthy balance in terms of what they're lifting and what they're doing with their bodies wonderful thank you because i was thinking on the lines of that but i just needed to hear someone to reinforce it more because that's what i how i feel about the vig vigorous like the vigorous exercises and the gym and you know just well, what people are really into for their body, you know? So like, I mean, I'm talking about people in the world and, um, you know, they're just, you know, they don't know enough about health. And that's where I, I ask God to help me to help others. But um, yeah, thank you. Cause I live close to the lake and I go up now as the weather's getting nicer. I like to walk up by the lake. Um, yeah, so thank you so much for this for this um, presentation and this information you shared. Um, I, I never heard of Pilates. Like what is a Pilates? I believe it's a form of exercise similar to yoga. It involves a lot of, a lot more stretching. Right. Um, and there's different things. I, I mean, it's, it's something that you definitely can look up. Um, I don't have a whole lot of detail on it, but I understand that it somehow is connected to spiritualism. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong next time I come, if you find anything different. But um, that is what I'm um, privy to. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you, Sister Natasha and Sister Jackie. So the next person is Colleen. Feel free to unmute your mic and ask your question. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, Jacqueline, for the beautiful presentation. Um, I'm, I'm an athlete, and when I became a medical missionary, I mm -hmm. started on a plant-based um, diet. Mm -hmm. yeah, but yeah, that, but that's when I started having some challenges. Uh, firstly, I lost a lot of weight when I stopped eating meat. And uh, when it comes to the skin, the more I lost weight, the more my skin was becoming saggy, although I was eating um, plant-based, I was eating a good diet. And um, uh, so, so as time went on, I started having problems with my one of my knees. My, my, my left knee started giving me problems. 
And uh, I tried uh, uh, policies, natural ways, uh, and you know, hoping to have that knee healed until I couldn't resist it anymore. And I went to see a medical doctor and I was told that I have nutrients deficiency. Mm -hmm. So uh, she prescribed some um, uh, uh, supplements for me, although I, I emphasize that I would love to have uh, something that is uh, close to natural as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, 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 as a natural nutritionist, nutritionist, uh, uh, Jacqueline, um, do you think that if you're an athlete, or even if you are on a plant-based diet, there is a particular or special nutrition that you you must uh, have, or you, you must have a different uh, plan when it comes to nutrition, because I uh, you 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 demand more from your your body. Mm -hmm. And the, my second question would be. I, I I really appreciate the you know, the WhatsApp link of to 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 be part of the WhatsApp group, uh, but previously I tried to connect on that uh, uh, link but could not succeed. Can anyone help me with that, please? Thank you. Okay, so to answer your second question first, um, that might be something that. Um... Sister Natasha could help you with. Sister Natasha um, had invited me to speak today. She might know more about the WhatsApp group um, connected with this ministry. So she might be able to help you with that afterwards. Um, in terms of your first question, so even as you were speaking, I was thinking of nutrition deficiency. Um, but ultimately, um, like I said, health is a combination of, um, you know, mind, body, spirit, and um, following all eight health laws. So um, if we're not properly following all the eight health laws, um, then you will notice that our bodies will lack or be deficient or um, not be at its optimal um uh, functioning um, that it normally would be um, if we were um, doing everything right in all eight areas. And when you're transitioning to a plant-based diet, um, it's most likely a combination of a change in your entire lifestyle. Most of the clients that I see um, or that I, I meet, um, not only is diet something that needs to be changed, but every area of the eight health laws has to always be addressed. Not It's not just about what we eat. It's about when we eat, our food combinations, considering maybe allergies or sensitivities our bodies may have. And so um, everybody's situation is different. I wouldn't necessarily give specific recommendations right now for your situation, but um, Talking to, um, I mean, and I'm open if anyone wants to reach out to me um, outside of the Sabbath on another day, you're welcome to do that because a full assessment of your entire situation is the approach that we take as natural nutritionists um, who work from um, this from the eight laws of health perspective um we don't just look at diet we look at every area of your life and so when we're making changes we're not just changing your diet but we're um, talking about exercise we're talking about water consumption when you drink water exactly how much you drink the amount of water your body requires per day is going to be different from the amount of water someone else's body requires and the type of water that you might drink as well um, how much sunlight you're getting, where in the world you live will make a huge difference about how much sunlight you're getting versus someone else. Um, temperance, it changes based on the type of job you might do. Um, some people work night shifts and can't really change that. And so we address, um, how you can change your diet to suit a night shift lifestyle. 
um, how you can change your sleep patterns to uh, suit a night shift lifestyle, to ensure that your body is regulated, is feeling that balance and the benefits of the balance. Um, so I hope that helps. I know it may have been a bit of a beat around way of answering your question, but um, to to give recommendations specifically, I'd have to talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, but definitely there is a way to eat and a time to eat and an amount to eat. Likewise with exercise, water, air, everything that we discussed today. So hopefully that helps. Wonderful. Thank you for that response, Sister Jacqueline. And also, you know, we'll offer to you, Sister Colleen, if you're interested in a consultation with a medical missionary, feel free to send your contact information to the host, um, which is DMV Gospel Med. And, um, you know, someone would be happy to consult with you or also feel free to reach out to Sister Jacqueline as well. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So we'll take the last question, and that will be from Sister Shirley. So go ahead, Sister Shirley. Thank you. I Thank just you. wanted, I know Jack, you will know this face. I just, I don't have any questions, but I certainly am so very happy that I heard this. And I want you all to know that Jackie and I go to the same church. So I know what questions I can ask when I'm ready to ask questions, but Thank you so much. God bless you in everything that you do. It's a good presentation. Praise happy Lord. Sabbath. Have a happy Sabbath. Amen, it was. Wonderful, wonderful. Yes, I echo Sister Shirley's um, encouragement as well. And just thank everyone for being on this morning or wherever you are in the world. It could be afternoon. Mm -hmm. A special blessing on our speaker as well, uh, Sister Jacqueline. Uh, blessing on you and your family. So thanks again. So we'll I'll turn it over now to uh, Sister Natasha to close us out in prayer. Natasha in Maryland, not Natasha in Canada. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Kiva. <laughs> Thank you, Sister Jacqueline, for <clears throat> this presentation and just pulling all the pieces together of the interconnectedness between the sanctuary and our body temple. Thank you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to come together. Um, we thank you for your woman servant who has spent time studying your word and spirit of prophecy to share with us um, how these pieces affect our ability to make a choice in our frontal lobe for you. Lord, we want to be a witness to those around us. May we take this information, fully incorporate it and share it with others. Lord, we have um, uh, some of us a remainder of our day and others of us are coming close to the end of the Sabbath, but may we go forth from here um, with your word and your truth and rest in you. Uh, please be with each of us until we meet again one from another. This is our prayer in your precious, most mighty name. Thy will be done. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. And we hope that you will be able to join us next Sabbath. We will have <laughs> Sister Jackie on for a part two, and we will send out the date once that's all arranged. But um, God bless. I put my contact details in the chat. Thank you. Anyone to reach out. I hope that's okay. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Have a happy Sabbath, everybody. Goodbye. Happy Sabbath. Bye. Blessings. Okay. Happy Sabbath. Uh, happy Sabbath. I'll give a little more time for those who might want to take down your contact information, Sister Jackie. Sure. No problem. <laughs>